Hi there YouTubers and 3D Studio Max lovers, welcome to my 3D corner. In today's episode we're going to talk about rugs, how to create any type of rug using the V-Ray fur. So as you can see here I have an example of a rug that is very fluffy, it has a lot of details as you can see here. So we are going to try to create something similar with this. So with different heights, as you can see here, the white part has a different height than the red one. So we're going to try to do all of this in uh, 3D Studio Max and V-Ray using the V-Ray 4. So if you guys are ready, let's jump in. Okay, so as you can see, I have the 3D Studio Max open here. The first thing that uh, we're going to do, I'm going to create a circle with uh, the dimension of 3 meters. So this means uh, 1500 millimeters because the radius, yes, needs to be 1500 to have a, a diameter of uh, 3 meters. Then as you can see, this is how our rug is actually looking. So what I'm trying to do now, I'm going to just save this image. Uh, you can find the link in the description. You can also download it from there and I will uh, open this in 3D Studio Max by creating a rectangle with the same dimensions as the image and then I'm going to apply the texture that we just download on this uh, plane in this way I'm going to try to match the, the dimension of the uh, image that we just downloaded to the circle that we created because the circle is the real uh, dimension of the uh, rug so I'm just gonna take a V-Ray material here and I'm just gonna add the V-Ray bitmap with the texture that we just downloaded Okay, now I'm just going to apply that to my uh, plane. I'm going to also add a uh, UV map to the plane to have the so I can see the texture. As you can see, it's not looking quite right. So this means that I need to rotate the texture uh, 90 degrees. So I'm just going to change the dimensions. Now it's all correct. Okay, so what I'm going to do next, I'm just going to try to scale the plane approximately to have it the same as my uh, circle that I just created earlier. I'm going to try to adjust it as much as possible to match the circle. Now I'm going to select the circle and check if it matches more or less the picture. I'm going to apply an uh, editable spline to it and by clicking Clicking on the vertex and using the refine button, I'm just gonna try to create some points that I'm going to adjust in such a way to recreate the rug. So what I'm doing next is to try to trace exactly the shape of my rug. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take all these points and trying to align them more or less to the dimensions of the rug. Uh, this rug is not perfectly uh, aligned with the circle, as you can see, because yeah, also in reality, nothing is perfect when we're talking about fabrics or rugs. They are more or less the dimensions that uh, they are saying on the website. So right now I'm using the Bezier. I'm just trying to arrange each spline to have it more or less in the same dimension. The important part is that my lines that I'm creating needs to be inside of the shape that we got from their website. In this way, we're not going to have a white uh, material appearing on the final product.
Okay, so as you can see, we just finished with the uh, tracing the uh, rug. So now we have a surface. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to apply an editable poly. In this way, I know exactly how the shape looks. And now I'm going to use a retopology. And I'm going to compute first to see exactly how it's looking with 5000 uh, polygons. Uh, yeah, I'm not very happy. As you can see, it's not perfectly traced when I'm re reusing retopology. And also applying a turbo smooth is not fixing the problem. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to retopology and I'm going to use more polygons. Let's see how it's going to look. Okay, the shape looks much better than before right now. And what I need to do next, I need to apply the same UV mapping that I had on the plane on my object. The problem is that in the moment that I um, scaled my plane to match the circle in the beginning, I changed the UVV properties. So to reset that, I need to go back to my uh, plane and use a reset x form in this way my shape is going to be back to zero and now reapply the uv mapping that i had in the beginning and as you can see as you can see my shape uh, is not the new shape that I created, the traced one, is not matching exactly the uh, the square where I have the original texture. So I'm just trying to move everything in such a way to, to match it. As you can see, I have some white spots where I can see the original image. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my editable spline and try to adjust the shape in such a way that I'm not going to see the white plane behind, only the rug. So as you can see, I'm fixing it right now. Okay, so I finished with uh, retracing the, the rug. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to recompute the retopology. So it's going to create new polygons on the mesh. Okay, now it's done. As you can see, it's looking perfect. I'm just going to check if uh, everything is looking all right. And what I'm going to do next, I'm going to apply the V-Ray. Okay, so this is how it's looking right now with the default settings. I'm going to change the length of the hairs to, I'm just going to make it 20 millimeters for now, so two centimeters. I'm going to change the gravity to zero. So they're all going to be straight up. I'm going to apply the material also to the V-Ray fur. So I'm also going to make a quick render just to see exactly how the fur looks like and how big is the density. As you can see, it's not such a big density right now. So to do that, I'm going to change per area from 0.2 to a bigger number. I'm going to try different numbers to see exactly which one fits better on my rug because the density needs to be quite high. So as you can see, even though I'm doubling the number right now, it's still not looking uh, good enough. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to uh, create another bitmap with a color correction and I'm going to put this in the length map. So what's going to happen, the program is going to understand that I'm going to move the saturation to zero. The program is going to understand that where you have white tone, the length is going to be higher and when you where you have gray or dark, the length is going to be smaller. So if you are perfectly black, don't you're not going to see any hairs on the rug, but in the moment that they are getting lighter like gray and white 
they are going to be taller. So now I'm playing a little bit with the contrast to see exactly which one is matching better the, the length. Add more hairs. I'm going to change a little bit the length variation so it's not going to be so visible. And also the total length, I'm going to make it a little bit higher. I'm just going to save the file for now so in case the 3 d Studio Max is going to crash, I still have what I worked on. I'm going to change the background into white. I can see better my rug. Add a bit of more, a bit more of a resolution. I start rendering. Let's see how the rug is actually looking. Okay, I can see the rug right now. I'm not very happy with the thickness of the hair, so I'm just gonna make them one millimeter. Also, the uh, direction and variation, I'm gonna make it less. And what I'm going to do next, I want to add a little bit more of details on the edge. So I'm going to apply a shell to have some thickness on my original plane that we made, my original mesh. And now I'm going to apply a poly select. In this way I can select the edges and here to apply a chamfer. The chamfer wasn't applied everywhere, but I'm just going to go back to my poly select and try to select all these edges. Okay, so right now I'm just gonna change a little bit the height of my render so I can see less white and more of my rug and I'm gonna try to make a render to see how, how my shape is looking right now with the new details. Okay, I like it much better. Now as you can see the hairs are turning on the side giving more realistic effect. I'm gonna play a little bit with the exposure and the filmic tone map to have a better render so I can see better my textures and hairs. As you can see it's looking very nice but it's, I think there are still not enough hairs on this rug. This is the main problem when we're working with fur. You need to add a lot of hairs to the object so in this way most of the time the render is getting slower and slower because he needs to calculate more when he's rendering. So yeah I'm just gonna add more hairs. Let's make a quick render. It's definitely better. Okay, so we have the first render here. As you can see, it's looking quite good. Uh, the number of hairs is not enough, but uh, yeah, we're not. I'm not gonna move forward with this. The only thing that is disturbing right now, and I don't really like it, is the fact that, um, uh, as you can see here in the other example, the roundness of the white part, which is not perfectly straight as in our render. So yeah, we need to create also this effect. But uh, to do that, we need to use uh, Photoshop and play a little bit with our texture. So what I'm going to do next is to create another bitmap for the height of the hairs. So to do that, I'm opening Photoshop right now. I'm just going to open my texture. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is to isolate my rug from the background. I'm going to make a selection on the background and then I'm going to invert that selection and I'm gonna cut my rug from the background. Okay, this is done now. So the next thing that I need to do is to have two layers, one with the red part and one with the beige part from the rug. So this means that I need to create a selection for the gray part and one with the dark part. So let's see how with the color range is gonna work. The color range is a very good tool for creating selections uh, when the shape are not really defined so now i have my selection i'll make a copy of it and i'm going to use an effect from the layers and i'm going to use the inner shadow in this way i'm going to have some fuzziness with shadows on the side so program is going to understand that i need a different height on the edge as you can see here these kind of textures they can be very well used also as a displacement or as a bump i'm going to make everything more even by taking out a little bit of contrast here the selection didn't work very well so i need to recreate the missing part so i'm gonna make a selection and then i'm gonna try to with a clone stamp to add the missing part Okay, this is done now. It's looking very nice. 
I will just save this as a JPEG. And now I'm going to load that texture into 3D Studio Max. I'm not gonna use the one that I was using before. This is my new uh, texture for the height. I'm gonna select my fur and connect it into the height in the length mode in this case. Okay, I'm gonna start rendering. And as you can see, uh, right now I have this roundness on the corner so we don't have hard edges anymore. And this is much closer to the reality. As you can see everywhere, the roundness is there. So this is the final render for this rug. For those that are following me on my uh, Patreon, they can download the scene with the rug uh, and the textures from there. So in case you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe. Give it a like if you find it useful. In this way, you're gonna have it saved in your like playlist on YouTube. So you can find it later. Share it with your friends and see you in the next one. Bye.